to talk about Gabriella Gray's interview with the Build series. I was a little bit hesitant to pursue this one because I feel it's a little bit late. It's been on social media for almost three or four days now. So I'm not sure if there will be enough people to, you know, get interested in watching this one. The one I'm gonna make. But uh, I have decided to go on because you requested for it. Siyempre naman. So within its three to four days of existence, I'm referring to the video. I really didn't try to watch it. You know, because excitement would perish if I would try to watch it. So it's better that I don't have any idea at all how it went on. For a fresher, more natural reaction. <laughs> but I'm excited. I was already, you know, feeling nakikiliti na since uh, two days ago. And a few hours ago, before I uh, went to my work, I already researched about build series. So I had this one. So that I have an info about uh, the channel. Alright, so let me read this for you. Build series, it has 161,000 subscribers. So it is a live interview series like no other. Taray. A chance for fans to sit inches away from some of today's biggest names in entertainment, tech, fashion, and business. As they share the stories behind their projects and passions. Every conversation yields insights and inspiration and plenty of surprises. Moderators and audience members ask questions. So it sounds very interesting. Now, without further ado, let's go straight now to the video. But I'm begging you, please join me in watching this again, even if you have already watched it, so that I have company. It will be more fun. Let's go. Patriona Gray was just 13 years old when mm, her Look at the girl. She had the Catriona effect. The only thing missing is the ear comb. <laughs> what do you think? Let's move it forward. Let's go straight to the interview. I have a very slow internet. Um, and the one thing that I have to ask, have to I'm, ask sure, I'm sure you hardly remember it, um, but I know Demi, who's the previous Miss Universe, was the one that crowned you, and I noticed that she whispered something in your ear and every time I've watched this I want to know what she said <laughs> <laughs> well actually she was like it's a little bit loose so be careful it doesn't fall off it was as practical as that hi everyone um, I'm so happy to be here my name is Catriona and I've been looking forward to this interview all week oh I'm very excited yeah. well we have the crown right here and I'm super excited about that too because it is beautiful and I might just have to steal it <laughs> um, but I like that it was something as practical as that, because because I thought it was going to be something like super inspiring, whatever, and that would have just gone oh, sorry, through one <laughs> and out the other at that point. So any advice I'm sure you could have got at that point was welcomed. Well, I think at that point I was just, um, you know, I, I don't know if you guys have ever known this or like when you get into that situation and your adrenaline's pumping and everything's just happening at a million miles an hour and I couldn't absorb anything. <laughs> that whole night after the crown was placed on my head just felt like I was in a dream state. It didn't feel real yet, which, you know, I know a lot of girls say this, but it's true. And and then how, how do you even process something that would happen in a matter of seconds mm -hmm. to be in <laughs> that whole night after the crown was placed on my head just felt like I was in a dream state. It didn't feel real yet. Which, you know, I know a lot of girls say this, but it's true. And and then how, how do you even process something that would happen in a matter of seconds mm -hmm. to be announced as Miss Universe? It really just takes so long to sink in. And I mean, it's not your first time being crowned and getting an incredible title. Okay. So, so in general, general, I don't have a voice. I liked it. Surprisingly, maybe because of its difference, because maybe of its loneliness, because of the serenity, because of the unenergized setting, <laughs> or an energized mood. It was very quiet. You wouldn't even hear a single applause, I think, throughout the whole show. Correct me if I'm wrong, maybe I have missed it. 
the interviewer was dull and boring. So it's really, you know, as how Filipino would say it, you, the walang kabuhay-buhay interview. Luckily, with a kind of host like this, Catriona was able to manage to lead the show to an interesting level. And the dullness that you could feel made Catriona impressive, more impressive than ever. I like that arrangement, you know, inside, but I really don't, I'm not really a fan of uh, a show that has the streets in the background. That you could see all those people moving. The cars are passing. You know, they're very distracting. Well, uh, don't get me wrong, I like some, especially the wish boss in the Philippines. You know, you could see this artist performing as the bus travels. So I don't have to say anymore what you could see as you listen to this artists. And more often than not, you would just focus on the artist and intently listen to their music. So you don't see any more those distracting images as the boss moves. But here, you know, it's not really pleasing to the eyes. I really didn't like it. Well, maybe I'm the only one who doesn't like it. So just don't mind me. I like this interaction with the audience. They are given this opportunity to throw in questions. And maybe that's one thing or one point that makes it uh, interesting, even though I really didn't like the opening. I like the host's uh, accent. I want to imitate that. It's so nice to the ears. Really, very cool. I'm not sure about this, but this is just an observation based on what I saw. The host has been committing a few errors that you would have this hint that she might be just uh, an amateur broadcaster or interviewer. Like when she said lip singing, which is supposed to be lip syncing. I don't know why on earth you could forget that in case you knew it. Or maybe she was just taken away totally by Catriona's magnetic personality this way. <laughs> she, she, you know, she gets rattled or something to that effect. She looks tense. It's not really cool, you know. Um, with due respect to the host. I'm not saying this because I feel myself as a better host than her, but it's just what I saw. It's just what I feel. It's just what I think. So pardon me if I get it all wrong. I'm just human. <laughs>
and that would make a bongaceous scene. <laughs> well, maybe it's just for the fair treatment. So there's no special, there's no regular. <laughs> so whether you're a Miss Universe or you are the vice president of the country or maybe you're the top artist or the top actress of Hollywood, you should be treated the same way. Just sit down there and let's start the interview. And uh, aside from that, she's, she really shares everything Filipino. When she said Laban, you would feel the purity, the realness of what's within herself. That she's very much a Filipino by heart. It just comes out naturally. She didn't prepare for that, I'm sure. But you know, she knows everything Filipino more than what we expected of her. She's very proud of her country and she lifts the flag everywhere she goes, basically. And when she said that her sash is not all about lettering, it's, it's the country itself, it's the Philippines. And you would like to embrace her and just extend your support to her in any way you can. So she's really the ambassador or the ambassadors of the Filipino nation in the truest sense of the word. Bonga. 